First up, Adobe has been an incredibly generous sponsor, and they have provided us with an amazing opportunity to hear from our first speaker. He's all the way from Austin, Texas. He's an amazing guy who's, who's doing some very forward-thinking stuff with mobile. He's the CEO of Left Right Media, is considered a thought leader in interactive digital first design, and he has a master's degree in electrical engineering. Anybody else? <laughs> yes? <laughs> Chris uses Adobe DPS, and he's uh, developed and founded a publication called CityGram Austin, and he's going to tell us all about the journey to how he did that. So please welcome Chris. All righty. Thanks, everyone. And uh, thanks, Adobe, for inviting me here to speak on their behalf about uh, Adobe Digital Publishing Suite, their end-to-end -end solution for creating mobile apps. And that's actually what I built my talk in today. And you can download this through CityGram um, after the talk, and if you want to check out for more. So I'll we'll start here by, start this talk by just asking a basic question, uh, something we all kind of wonder. Uh, why are we here? And even more specifically, it's why am I here? And this is a question I asked myself just over a year ago uh, while I was working for IBM as a hardware engineer. And it's also at the time when I just started photographing homes and profiling creatives for this site called uh, Apartment Therapy. Now, this is the first time I was doing creative work since I was 16 years old, since my parents told me to find a real job and to find a real career. Uh, I left it behind. And Apartment Therapy gave me the opportunity to jump back in. And it was the first time like, meeting creatives again and, and meeting those kind of people, and it energized me people that define themselves as artists, writers, and designers. And I wanted to find a way to count myself amongst that. Um, but it was hard. Like, I was 32. I had a wife, had a new car, new home, all these kind of things that maintain this income level that I needed to provide. Uh, but when I took a step back and looked at it, what I didn't have anymore was Amazon Prime shipments at my doorstep all the time, and tons of them. And so, like, it was, I think, six weeks in at apartment therapy, and I looked back at it like I haven't bought a single thing. And I realized that I was just doing those things because I was bored because I wasn't fulfilled creatively. And so that money that I thought I needed, maybe I didn't need it at all. So thinking about that and that perspective gave me an open mind, and it made me think about maybe I don't need uh, IBM as a career. Maybe I can think about switching it up, and maybe I can think of a new idea. So why am I here? I didn't just quit my job, though, at the time. Um, my wife probably would have got much crazy. Uh, I needed an idea, something that, you know, like everything else I've done, layered my skills, uh, layered my skills in tech, layered my skills in artist. And I needed something that could potentially be a business. And so that idea came to me while I was looking through an issue of GQ magazine, uh, which is a built-in Adobe DPS as well. Um, and I was looking through it, and I enjoyed it. I mean, I read, I was an early adopter of tech. I was, enjoyed this content. Uh, but why wasn't everything interactive? Why couldn't I buy these pair of Cole Haan shoes I looked at? Um, so I started to think about that, and that's kind of what derived my idea for CityGram. And looking at the magazine industry at the time, it was kind of brutal. You, it was struggling, and I was trying to get in. If you look at that first point where you see that, like it stops rising, it's in 2007, and that's when the iPhone was announced. A year later is when the App Store was announced. And then those things kind of set the stage for social media to surge. And that's what we saw in 2009, when Twitter, Facebook, and things as we know it started taking over our lives and becoming this main content stream. So as we started viewing things on our devices, as that became our primary mode of consumption, we kind of built, media was built for the web. And so magazines started losing traction. In 2011, shortly after the iPad was announced, Adobe DPS uh, was announced. And they launched with a suite of Condé Nast publications that are all really well done. And this is what I took notice of. It was like, when I started thinking about making a magazine, which ones were the best, and they all were built with this. 
A year later, they launched Creative Cloud, and that was this all access pass to all their tools, stuff that I, I wanted to try but didn't want to necessarily spend the money to, to dive in. This gave me a chance to look at that. Uh, so those two things, I think, kind of set the stage for the magazine to come back, set the stage for creatives and people like me that aren't enterprise level to think of new ideas and create something fresh. And that's exactly what I tried to do. So when I started with Citigram, and I, I still called it that then, I, I wanted it to be this like living telegram of the city. Media is so personal now, and magazines weren't. Like, I don't, never knew who wrote my articles, and so I wanted to give focus to that, just how there was focus on that on the web. Everything I built was um, first time using it. You know, no graphic design experience, but I got in design and, and toured around with it, and this is one of the first templates I built. And so I built this suite, and I showed it to my friends, people I trusted in media, and asked them their feedback. Hey, if I made this, you think it'd be good? Um, then we started taking it to magazine executives, and the response was always overwhelmingly positive. So then I started building the team of freelancers, creatives, writers, artists, photographers, all people that spoke digital. They spoke through Twitter, Facebook. They, it was their first language. As a new brand, I needed to have this to have, have some credibility. And when I had that support, it gave me the motivation to confidence to call up my job and say, hey, I'm going to quit to make a magazine. And that was a pretty crazy conversation. So in June of last year, we launched. This is our first cover. And I'm actually going to show you some of our first articles, too. This is like a smoothie recipe. And I really wanted to be this lifestyle publication and make conceive everything digital first. In Austin, this is the first time many people saw this. Um, for me, it was like, oh, yeah, you know a digital magazine. But there was this preconceived notion that a digital magazine was an issue that you read on a desktop, or it was um, a blog. And so for me, it was showing them what I think a digital magazine should be. And it got wave reviews. It started building a lot of traction right away. You know, Citigram is different from many other digital magazines from the Statesman. And there were more that aren't popping up. But um, one of them said uh, that I liked a lot. It said Citigram could be mistaken for a, a commercial publication if, you, if commercial publications weren't generic and didn't offer new experiences. Um, and, and so that, that meant a lot to me. And as we started building, um, we started using the analytics built in the software, too, to derive a magazine for the masses. Um, this is from our latest issue. And so finding what content people respond to, what they're receptive to, and building that just for them, covering people, covering food, which is huge now, covering city developments, which is Austin's growing a lot, and people are interested at what's next, um, covering fashion pictorials, which is what a lot of our young people are so tuned into. Um, but apps, in general, this is an app. And apps, for them to be useful, they have to provide some function, some utility. And so I didn't just want it to be a magazine. I wanted to market it as a guide as well. And so we offer weekly updates. What events are happening this weekend? What live shows can you see? And let me hear these bands before I go check them out. And so like, I wanted to build that built-in convenience. And so we kind of conceive all these things um, issue to issue and iterate on it. We also have profiles from local tastemakers. What are they checking out? Recommendations on books and apps. And then just providing that connection right on the page so I can go check it out and, and connect it. I mean, that's how things should work. But they just people weren't building it that way. And then to take you right to the place and let you really experience it, you know, through all mediums, through video, through, oh, I wish the audio was on. Um, there we go.
So these kind of things like really let you step into the place and let you see it. Uh, we try to give you a print article, beautiful images, and beautiful video so that you can consume content the way you want to. And we do this all natively. We build it all. It's, it's me and a team of hires and a team of interns using Adobe Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, Animation Edge. We kind of just I have all these tools at me and it's just exciting to like build things and make, make new experiences. Um, when you do this with photos, you can make audio come to life. You're not just looking at it, you're hearing from the artist himself how he took the photo, why he took it. And there's lots of people that you know, discount digital. They say, oh, well, there's still plenty of people that enjoy and love print. Print's never going to die. And that, that's true. I, be, I believe that. I mean, I still enjoy print, too. But you are ignoring the fact that people enjoy the digital experience, too. There's a whole generation that enjoys the pleasure of you know, swiping and scrolling on their phones and, and getting data. And this is fun experience. And that's how we have to differentiate ourselves in a crowded marketplace, is providing something fun, something informative, and something that's shareable, and, and people enjoy doing that. I can see this beautiful plate of food and interact with it, and it makes me more hungry for it. Uh, same thing with our fashion editorials. Like, by being digital only, we're without boundaries for what we can create, and, and you just get things that are unexpected, and people love to see that. And then I can go back and, and provide that connection. Now I can by that shoe that I'm looking at on the page, because we connect it all. But it's not just our editorial that's interactive. We also um, make our advertising interactive. And we design it and develop it in the same design language you develop the magazine, so that it becomes transparent. It becomes invisible. And you already know how to use it, you already know how to read it, and you spend more time on it. It's not this distracting web banner that you may tune out. And again, providing that instant connection. So how do you sell that? I didn't just sell digital ads. I didn't go to a meeting and an advertiser and say, do you want a digital ad for my digital magazine? Like, how abstract is that? And nobody even knew what that was. So I had a lot of extra work on me. I had to build concepts, and who better to build it than the person who's designing the magazine, the person that's working with the software, and the person that's creating these experiences. So I didn't go to a client meeting saying, hey, do you want this digital ad? I went to them saying, do you want this? And most of our advertising is straight exact replicas of what I brought into that meeting. Saying, hey, you probably want to show that all the different regions of Austin you want to touch with your advertising. Hey, maybe people want to call you um, right on the device as they're looking at it. And maybe they want to see more pictures. Oh, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> we don't want to call them now. But um, so that's what I showed them. And, and then that became an easier sell. It was, oh, I want that. I can see myself in that. Um, I can, now I can make the reservation for the restaurant I'm looking at. Now advertisers can tell more of their story. This is not just a co-working space, it has office space, it has dedicated desks. And now I as a reader can find out more info on it, rather than looking it up on the website. Just build it in for me. That's what you want. Let me call or email them on the spot. Um, now I can show more of my product. I'll let you open it up and touch it. And so when you start doing that, you know, we start seeing people loving the ads. They, it's connecting them. It's extra utility. The ad becomes an article for me, and it becomes extra content that people utilize in, in information streams. This is a fun, fun, fun fest coming up, and now I can see their Twitter stream, respond on Twitter, and this is all live. Uh, we have corporate sponsors, too, like Whole Foods, and, and then some of other ones, like Austin Food and Wine Festival. They trust us to develop ads for them now. Like, you know where your reader, what do they want? I think they want a breakfast taco guide um, from the chefs that are at Austin Food and Wine Festival. So we build that. Everyone who's coming into Austin wants a breakfast taco. Um, who better to get it from from the chefs? And now that, that provides 
touch for them, but it provides utility. Same thing for advertorials. Uh, we have here one from W Hotel. Um, we tell them what our themes are so that this content can be made for that theme and, and it fits in line with it. So here's like a DIY mask. I can know how to make it with the ingredients. And then now I have this note about some special they have for locals. Right? We're not resistant to advertising. We're resistant to bad advertising. So how much does it cost? A banner ad is really cheap. And it's hard to make a business from that, monetize a blog from that. It needs to be huge, and, and, it, and it, it's even harder to monetize that now. Print advertisings are kind of where we want to be. And right now, we're kind of marketed right here in the middle. Um, but eventually, you know, we want to be in a place where we're more, because I think we're doing more for you. We're offering more utility, more connection, and we're offering verified metrics in a space where many don't have it. Um, there's tons of free magazines that just tell you how many they print. But everywhere I go, there's stacks of them. So how do we justify that cost? Um, we justify that cost through metrics we find in Adobe DPS2. We look at time spent per reader, sessions per reader. Hey, we're building an app. Let's make it fun. Let's make it useful. Let's show that people are coming back. Let's show that people are reading page to page. Let's show that this is becoming part of their lifestyle. And that's what we've been able to do um, in our short time and iterate to that quickly, faster than everyone else because I'm only doing digital. It's the only thing I'm focusing on. And issue to issue, I see change. And as we start doing that, you know, we start growing. We start seeing interesting things, too, in, in readership by devices. And that, that allows us to start thinking about tailoring content to them, too. Uh, one thing that we saw interesting since we recently lost on, launched on Android was what articles people are reading. And it's, it's hard to see here, actually impossible to see here. So on iOS, our cover story is this summer fashion lookbook. It's the number two read article on iOS. On Android, it's the number 12 most read article, the very bottom, almost. On Android, the number two article, or number four article, was an article about tech. It uh, was an old article about Outbox that we published. And on iOS, that same article is number 12. So it's almost like this reverse switch. So knowing that, like, now I'm getting more in touch with my readers. I should have served my Android people a different cover. And I can with this. I mean, it's not, it's not hard to do. I'm publishing it through different mediums. Um, and, and so I think that'll keep us iterating. And then we can start changing our ads, right? You don't want to see an iPad cover ad on your Android device. You want to see an Android cover ad. And so um, we'll be getting there, too. So going back again, why am I here? I'm here to tell you about this app. I'm here to tell you, you know, what we created that's kind of that's kind of new. But I'm also here to tell you about like the state of the industry. And it's, you know, it's at this place where, you know, designer and developer need to be one. And I think, you know, Adobe Creative Cloud helps us do that. It helped us do that. Um, it helped me do that individually as we grew. I give it to my interns and and all who work for us uh, as designers. And, and we start creating new stuff. And we start creating things that we never thought of creating before because we have access to everything. And it's fun and it's exciting. And, and once we start doing that at this pace, you know, you want to you create stuff for people. That's at the base of what we all want to do. And, and, and it becomes this, this great experience. You know, closing there, it's just thinking about, you know, why am I here again? Um, and that's a question you, know, you guys can all do now with you know, technology, the state of technology. We're at a place where so much is at our fingertips, so much is within our control, and we're not this generation that's, ostent that's plagued with ostentation. We're this generation that's filled with confidence and to come up with new and unexpected answers to why are we here. And so uh, that's all I have. Thanks so much. Uh, check out Citygram for it, and uh, feel free to contact me about anything. <laughs>